you know, in every service, there's three parts. There's the minister part, praise the Lord, I came prepared to minister to you. And then there's God's part, but then there's the people part. Yeah. Did you know there's three parts <clears throat> to every service? And uh, I promise you, I'm going to do my best to do my part. And, and we know God's faithful, amen. He's able, well able to do what only God can do. So the, the only part that's left is your part. Yeah. So, and so your part would be just be full of expectancy. You know, uh, listen with ears that, you know, you want to hear from heaven. You know, draw on the word, draw on the gift. You know, not just me, but draw, draw from heaven tonight. And the Holy Spirit will minister uh, extraordinarily to different things that we have need of. Amen. I want to... Uh, just say thank you, Pastor Ed, for, you know, for having mercy on me and my, my singleness away from home. I was all by myself, and I was so blessed that I said, well, Annie may not be with me. He goes, oh, we, we love you too, you know, so, so, you know, I thought for years the only reason I got in anywhere was because I had a pretty wife who was really awesome and could sing and preach and everything else, and, you know, I could send her out. She, she always brought back more money when she went out by herself than when I was with her, so I, I was beginning to think, you know, just let her go, you know. <clears throat> but uh, when Pastor Ed said, no, we, we, we like you too. And uh, I thought, well, I, I appreciate that. Uh, we, we have different churches we go to. We, some are the, the Kevin churches. There, there's actually some churches that like me more than Annie. And then there's some churches that like Annie more than, than me. And then there's, we, there's some churches we call it the Kevin and Annie churches. That means they like both of us the same. That's us. That, okay, I praise the Lord. But... Um, no, this church uh, means a lot to my wife and I. Uh, wow, I met Pastor Ed probably 21 years ago. I mean, this was one of the first places we ministered at, and I met uh, Pastor Ed at Brother Hagen's camp meeting, and that might have been back when there was like, I don't know, 12, 15,000 people that registered there for Brother Hagen's camp meeting. And Pastor Ed walked up to me and goes, I'm Ed Taylor. No, excuse me, I'm Ed Taylor. And uh, I thought, no, you're not. You are not Ed Taylor. Ed Taylor is a lot older, and he, you know, only a person old and has been around the things of God for years and talks like this could be Ed Taylor. But sure enough, that was Ed Taylor, you know. And uh, he, he really did try to <clears throat> I did. I, I just said, uh, No, you're not. No. I mean, I, his voice is so big and booming, you know. I mean, his, his voice is anointed. That's not fair. You know, but no, it's what God gave him. But uh, his, his voice is just so powerful, and I was on the phone just listening to his voice, you know. And so, anyways, I was expecting someone. Well, yes, I am. I, he had to convince me. No, really, I am, Pastor Ed. You're coming to my church. And that's how we got started. And we've loved it every time we've been here. We've always had great unction here, utterance from the Holy Ghost, and... Uh, God's always, you know, you guys could have anybody you want to. Pastor Ed knows so many people. I know, yeah, some weird people like Joe Morris and some other people like that. But other than those people, no, uh, you know, you've, you've had a lot of our friends minister here uh, besides my wife and I. And so God sent you his best. And, you know, faith will cause God, God to do so many things for us. You know, the favor of God is amazing. You know, the, the anointing that's on us and our faith being released can uh, accomplish so many things. Just real quick, I, I, I don't want to take up much time with this because uh, I really want to get to some things that I'm excited about ministering to you tonight. But uh, again, that uh, album that I was mentioning about the trumpet, if, you, you know, if uh, Nathan would have kind of stepped it up sooner, I might have played tonight. But <clears throat> anyways, no. Hey, you know, no, 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 don't go there. <clears throat> I really enjoyed it. And I, I was amazed how much is in you that I didn't know was in you. It's, it's a blessing to, to see what you're doing for God. But this is a trumpet album called Awesome God. And then the last album uh, my wife and I recorded was I See the World in Worship. And this one's gotten global distribution. Uh, great album. And uh, here's a, uh, these is some of the things I'm showing you is just a single CD. I really like this one. Uh, it's, it's by me, not just because it's by me. <laughs> but uh, it's called No Pastor, No Pasture. Uh -huh. If you don't have a pastor, then you, you won't be led into green pastures. Good. And... Uh, <clears throat> it's an amazing thing that God chose to use pastors in our lives. And, uh, you know, the one ministry gift and office that God, uh, Jesus, when he was on this earth, said that when he saw the multitudes scattered and they were fainting and they were weary, he didn't say they needed a prophet. He, didn't, he wasn't moved with compassion uh, and, and said that they need uh, an evangelist. They, he, Jesus said these sheep need a pastor. 
And as I have looked into the, into the Word of God, I have found out that if you want to not faint, if you don't want to be weary, if you don't want to be scattered, if you don't want to be dismayed, if you want to eliminate fear from your life, and you want to be taught in the knowledge of the Word of God so that you'll have increase, that you'll multiply, and that you'll come into a full, wealthy place, God's way of doing that is by giving you a pastor who will feed you with knowledge so all those things will come to pass in your life. And it's all based upon having a pastor. Not a prophet, not a, an evangelist, not a, an apostle, but God sent us pastors. And so you're blessed. I, I can say this confidently. You all have one of the best pastors in America. He just happens to be right here in Greensboro. And uh, I know that because I know from the times we talk, the, the depth and the, the vastness of the word and the revelation he has, I know you're getting, I, you know, I, I, I couldn't possibly say anything that's going to razzle-dazzle you or be something you never heard before because I know you're hearing a, a great word. And so, um, but that, that I have found out and I've sur actually surveyed, you know, my wife and I are professional visitors. <laughs> this is what we do for a living. <laughs> I visit churches for a living. And part of our spiritual equipment is to size up churches Find out where the people are. I love 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. Paul said, I want to see your face, because when I see your face, I may perfect that which is lacking in your faith. One thing about ministry gifts and men of God that are sent by God, standing in different offices, is that we have the equipment. God's given us this equipment to look at your face and find out what we need to minister. How cool is that? <laughs> and, and so, uh, but you have a pastor who does that every week. Yes, he does. <clears throat> and I have found out, as I told you, I'm a professional traveling visitor, and uh, I have been surveying people across the, the nation and around the world. And uh, I have found out most people don't know why they're at the church they're, they're at. And, and I've clearly uh, found in the Word of God, the only reason why you would be at this church is because you found your pastor, your man of God. And once you recognize that God sent you this anointing, if you recognize that anointing, he's not just a preacher to you. He is a visitation from heaven, a voice from heaven, to help equip you to do what you thought it was his job to do. <clears throat> Did you all get that? And so that's the absolute truth. That's what Ephesians says. And uh, so anyways, you're blessed here. And if you want to just be more stirred up on how to receive from your man of God, that CD will do that. And then... Uh, Here's one of my favorites. I've, I've ministered for years and haven't really ministered on this here just recently, but this is Holy Ghost Power. Everyone say Holy Ghost Power. Holy Ghost power. You know, uh, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. And my pastor told me this. He says, whatever you're ashamed of will not be power to you. Wow. I'm not ashamed of divine healing. How about you? Right. How many of you want the, the, the divine power of God to feed you on the inside so everything on the outside works properly. Amen. And, and I, I, therefore, I'm also, I'm not ashamed of the Holy Ghost because he is power to me. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Aren't you glad for the Holy Ghost? And uh, I really believe that there's so much more um, to walking in the Spirit and walking in the power of the Spirit than, than what we've really um, come to really uh, take a hold of. And, uh, you know, just the very fact that in the Word of God where it mentions power, it's dunamis, dynamite, explosive. And, of course, my favorite, um, you know, if you study the Greek on that word power, the, the, the best one, I think, is miracle. That's what that word power means, miracle power. People are wondering, how, what am I going to have to do, how far do I have to go, to get my miracle. Well, if you got the Holy Ghost, your miracle is right on the inside of you. And faith will activate that power, that miracle power, on the inside of you. How many of you know that it's Christ in you, the anointing in you, the hope of glory? How many of you know that's not a mystery anymore? That we have the power of the Holy Ghost on the inside of us. So uh, if you uh, want to power up, you know, some people get their power from uh, Jehovah Java. Uh, or, or Hebrews. Uh, some people, you know, spend five dollars to try to get a little caffeine. Well, no, there's nothing you could buy in the natural that's going to power you up and energize you like knowing who you are 
and, and, and knowing the power that's available that's already on the inside of you. So there's some great things there. Uh, I, I worked in Brother Hagen's prayer room for 10 years. And the last five years, I had the privilege of leading his prayer room. And uh, we had nights where 400 people a night got filled with the Holy Ghost. If, you ever, if you've never seen all at one time 400 people getting filled with the Holy Ghost, you've missed half your life, I'm telling you. <laughs> that is a really awesome, exciting thing. And uh, I had the opportunity to be a part of that. And, and then here's one thing. Uh, well, let me uh, just start with this. Um, this, is a, this is the prettiest woman in my life. This is my wife, Annie. She is pretty, isn't she? So everyone can see her. And uh, she's back in Cocoa Beach looking at the waves right now. And, uh, but she's joining me Friday night. But this uh, one CD is called This Changes Everything, and it's only $5. How many of you would like to change everything in your life for $5? Can I see your hand? I mean, wouldn't you like to change everything for $5? This teaching is absolutely phenomenal. And it's about the love of God. And I almost can guarantee you there'll be something you'll hear in here that you have never heard before, and it will, it's a game changer for you. Uh, Cooper Beatty from Rama, who's one of the instructors there at Rama. How old is Cooper Beatty, would you say? Uh, Annie taught this message at Rama, at, at Rama Bible Church. Cooper Beatty, Beatty, who he's, I think he wrote half the Bible, didn't he? Didn't he? <clears throat> Uh, you know, he could, he, they called him Machine Gun Beatty because he could spit out the scriptures, spit out the word faster than anybody and as much as anybody that you've ever heard in your life. And after Annie got done, he came up, 90 years old, came up to Annie and goes, Annie, he said, I have never seen that in the Bible until tonight when you taught that. He goes, that is truth, that is right on. He goes, and he was so cute, he wanted to give Annie something. He goes, can I send you all of my syllabuses? He, he wanted a trade. He said, I thank you for that word. I feel like I need to give you everything I've ever learned. You know? And so if, if you want to be inspired about the love of God, I'm telling you, Annie ministers some things that it's just amazing. Uh, you, know, it, you know, Jesus was answering an attorney one time. This uh, attorney asked Jesus, he was trying to trick him, and he says, you know, what's the greatest commandment? of them all, you know, and of course Jesus talked about the, the commandment that you love, you know, the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and then he said to love your neighbor as yourself. Well, I've got news for you, if your um, understanding or your position in, in the love of God is based upon how you love yourself and how you're loving others, you're going to fall way short, because we have found out, discovered, most people really don't love themselves a whole lot. And so if you're struggling with being able to really walk in the love of God towards others, it might be because you've you got the, the understanding of, the, of uh, the love of God that was under the law and not the new commandment that John chapter 13 talks about. And, 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 it, and, it, and it phrases what the commandment of love there is. And it's really interesting what's in there and what's out of there. And when you find that out, it will set you free. It will help you to walk in the love of God like you never have before. It's absolutely amazing. So that's at the table. And, uh, and then there, here's one. This, this is probably, of all the things I've ministered, I think this is probably this, this message on shout. Uh, it says here at the top, you could be a faith giant if you only had a shout. Thank you for your enthusiasm. God bless you. Um, no, I, uh, I love ministering along that line, and I believe I actually ministered um, on that subject when I was here one of the times, uh, one of those times when it was glorious. Um, and uh, <clears throat> Psalm 67, verse 5 says, Let the people praise thee, O God, let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield its increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. He said, let the people praise thee, O God, let all the people praise thee, then shall the earth yield its increase. It's interesting that God decided to use praise as the thing that would set forth increase to come to you through this earth. Well, that can't possibly be true. Well, I, I want to just uh, admonish you tonight in that, aren't you glad you're in a covenant with a God who can do more than your brain can figure out? <laughs> now, I know it makes absolutely no sense to think that when you get your praise on, 
And when you find your shout, because the Bible says in Psalms chapter 5 that, let, that when the people that put their trust in him rejoice and they shout and they're glad. Everyone say rejoice and shout and are glad. Rejoice and shout and are glad. That's what faith people do. They rejoice, they shout, and they're glad. Did you know that faith people don't sit in dark rooms and wring their hands You're and right. worry about tomorrow? That's not what faith people do. Let me say it again. Faith people yeah. don't sit in dark rooms yeah. Yeah. and wring their hands and worry about tomorrow. Right. 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 The faith people, they rejoice and they shout. Do we hear that from anybody, yeah. Pastor Ed? Faith people rejoice, <laughs> they shout, and they're glad. <clears throat> and I found out in 1 Peter, the, the first chapter around the 8th verse says, Whom you haven't seen, though you see him not, you believe. Everyone say believe. That's what you do when you're, you're in faith. You're believing God. You believe. And then it says the next thing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. And then it says receiving the end of your faith. Everyone say believe. believe. Say rejoice. rejoice. Receive. receive. Say believe. believe. Rejoice. rejoice. Receive. receive. What comes first? Believe. What comes right after believing? Rejoice. Right when you made a decision, you're going to use your faith to get something from God you know you need. You know you want God to do it, and you're going to use your faith. The very next thing that comes after, amen, I believe I receive, is you start rejoicing. And you keep rejoicing until you go, there it is. There's the end of my faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing that's going to cause, now here's something that you, you might find interesting, is that there are four seasons in most places that we live in, 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 in this country. Four seasons. There's winter, spring, summer, fall. You know, different seasons are going to come to all of us, aren't, aren't they? You can't necessarily stop those seasons from coming, but I want to encourage you that seasons of life, when you're going through a test, when you're going through a trial, there are things we can do that's in our court to advance and accelerate the season that you're standing in. Thank you for your enthusiasm. If there's something that's been tough, a little bit challenging, you want to get to the end of your faith? You're believing? You're trusting God? You're needing a miracle? You're needing God to come through for you in an area? The thing that will accelerate the season and, and go from having believed God to the end of your faith is just rejoice and shout and be glad, wear a smile, be grateful, just be thankful, lift your hands and praise when it's time to praise God. With Nathan, you get your praise on, you get plugged into what the words are saying, you get your hands up, you get your shout on, and it just causes that season to be accelerated, and you can come into that place of receiving quicker by, by the releasing of your faith. It seems like God will pass over a million people to just to get to one person who's believing him. I think I heard that Smith Wigglesworth said that. Was that right? Well, you know what? I wonder who God came to minister to here for tonight. Anybody here? Did, did, is there anybody here that believes you're the one that God would pass over a million people to get to you? Any, anybody here? Now I've got something very exciting to tell you about. I'm, I'm here not to preach your message because uh, Pastor Ed can probably preach and teach better than I ever thought about it and you get blessed all the time but I'm here to bring an impartation to you I'm here to make a deposit into you, and I'm here to minister by the laying on of hands. This is going to be a laying on of hands service. Everyone say, this is a laying on of hands service. Hand service. And I want to prepare your heart to receive by the laying on of hands. You know, uh, Paul told Timothy, stir up the gift of God, which is in you, by the laying on of hands. There are things that are imparted in, in our lives through the ministry of the laying on of hands. How many of you know, I'm sure you do if you're part of this church, that the laying on of hands ministry is one of the major doctrines of our church. Uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you know, is one of the major doctrines. I was talking to Brother Hagin at his house one time. Not that I, I went over there, you know, all the time, but I lost count how many times I did go over there. And one time I said, Brother Hagin, I said, when we lay hands on people, uh, you know, for the ministry uh, of receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit, is it just like the same law of laying hands on people for healing? He said, no doubt about it. Absolutely. It, it's, it goes with the laying on of hands, the doctrine of laying on of hands for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, for instance, just as Mark chapter, you know, chapter uh, 16. Yeah. It, says, it says that these signs shall... 17, 16? 16, 16, yeah. 
Mark chapter 16, it says, These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They'll lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. I, I, the better word that I like is, uh, it can also be translated, be whole, made whole. I, I like that better. You know, sometimes recovery, we think of a process of time. I know some things do take time sometimes, but I just like what Jesus really said, and the only example that the disciples had of Jesus' ministry, they either got healed immediately, or they were healed within the same hour. You know, wait an hour if you want to, but get healed within the hour. Amen. Yeah. Right. But I, I like what Jesus said, you know, be whole. These sons shall follow them that believe. They'll lay hands on the sick, and they'll be whole. They'll be well. They'll be healed. Amen. Yeah. And, and so uh, the laying on of hands ministry is, a, is an amazing thing. Uh, right before Brother Oral Roberts left this earth, and he passed away a number of years ago. I don't remember what year that was, but um, he started having a lot of ministers, a lot of rhema people, ministers, were going to his home, his personal home in, in California, and one of the things that uh, Brother Oral began to tell a lot of pastors, he said, lay hands on your people more. He said, lay hands on the sheep. You need to lay hands on the sheep. And, and he said, sheep need their, their pastor to lay hands on them. And he said, and not just for healing, but for blessing, just for impartation. You know, the Bible says that the blessing of the Lord will make you rich. And you can transfer a blessing just by the laying on of hands. Did you know that? And, and uh, you'd be a lot more excited about it if you knew that what the blessing of the Lord is, and that is that it will make you, you know, the blessing will make you rich. It'll cause you to prosper. It'll cause you to have overflow. It'll, it'll cause you to come into a wealthy place. It'll cause you to, uh, you know, think more clearly. It'll, it'll, it'll cause you to advance, cause the favor, the grace of God to just be, uh, you know, more you know, manifested in your life. That's what the, the, the blessing of the Lord will do. I, I remember one minister, he was at a pastor's church, and this pastor had put up a lot of, he invested a lot of money, you know, uh, paid for the, the, this minister's jet, you know, fuel, which could be, you know, two to $5,000 just for the jet fuel before the meeting started. That's not saying anything about the hotel room or the rent of cars or, or the, this minister's help that he had with him. And, and so this pastor had invested a lot of, of money into this meeting, and other ministers were, were attending the meeting, and they were there. And here, when this man of God, this prophet of God, began to minister to all the people, I mean, he had these wonderful words. I mean, people were getting, you know, by the laying on of hands, prophetic words about their life, and people were just getting so blessed. And, and finally, when this prophet of God came to this one, the pastor of this church who's hosting the meeting, all he said was, Be blessed. And he went under the power of God. Well, when he got up, he was thinking to himself, oh, that's great. I'm the one that hosted the meeting. You know, I, I, I'm the one that, you know, put up the finances for this meeting. And all these other ministers got all these amazing words because all I got was be blessed. <laughs> What's up with that? And, and the Lord said to him, he goes, well, obviously, you don't know what being blessed really means. Because if you know what the blessing of the Lord will do, if you know what the anointing on your life will do, yeah, yeah. You, you'll realize that I'm about to get something that's going to be a game changer for me, and, and things aren't going to be the same anymore. And I, I remember one time I was... Um, it's okay to still preach in this church, right? Okay, I, I, thought, I thought it was okay, just checking. Uh, you know, I was on the way to a, 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 a meeting one time, and uh, actually, my wife and I had the privilege of ministering for Benny Hinn at his church. And uh, my family are, are, you know, have been close to his family for years, known them. My one brother uh, babysitted Benny Hinn and Suzanne Hinn's uh, uh, kids. And Suzanne used to travel in my dad's choir. So kind of kind of go back. And so uh, we were in Orlando down there, and we were on our way to a meeting. And... Uh, on our way, uh, the car in front of me, it just all of a sudden started to, to sprinkle, kind of rain a little bit. And the car in front of me slammed on his brakes and, and instead of stopping, slid right into and just rammed right into the car in, in front of him. And uh, I'm sitting there and somehow I just got my car over to the grass and there was some gravel and that gravel kind of gripped my tires and I was able to stop bef before I slid into the car. So I'm, I'm, I'm parked there, I'm looking at all this metal heaped up and I mean, it, it, it wasn't good, and, and, uh, and I began to just think about, I was just thinking that these people, their whole lives are turned upside down. 
you know, they're going to have to have a repair shop, fix their engine, uh, the body of their cars. They're going to be exchanging insurance. There may be some legal matters. I mean, th I mean this thing could go on for weeks and weeks and, or even months and months. Their, their whole life, just one bump, one bump, in one split second, everything changed in their life. And right while I was thinking that, the Holy Spirit on the inside of me said, if you think that's something, he goes, you ought to just see what I can do with one touch by me. Amen. The Bible says that the anointing shall remove the burden and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Everyone say, because of the anointing, of the, anointing the burden is removed. And the, and the yoke is destroyed. Everyone say, the burden is removed. The burden is removed. Say, the yoke, the yoke is destroyed because of the anointing. Of the anointing. Everyone say, thank God, for the anointing. thank God for the anointing. Look, if you would, to Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. I'm going to try to move along pretty good and, and uh, just prepare your hearts to receive the anointing by the laying on of hands. Look what it says here, <clears throat> verse 18. It says, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I tell you what, there's nothing like a river when it's been all dry. Yeah. And verse 25 says, I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins no more. Thank God that God said he blots out your transgressions and he will not remember them. Aren't you glad that your sins cannot be put up on the overhead screen tonight? Anybody glad about that? Aren't you, aren't you glad about that? That's just the mercy of God right there. Uh, you know, I, and I love the best definition I ever heard of the mercy of God is where God will treat you better than you deserve. Amen. That's great. Yeah. And, and that's just, I, I can't improve on that. You know, God will treat you better than you deserve. How many of you are glad God's going to treat you better than you deserve? Thank you know, God. if it wasn't for the blood of Jesus and the finished work of Jesus, where would any of us be? I mean, if you, if you got what you deserved, if, if we took every, a list and put it up on the screen of everything thought, Every goofy thing you did, every time you fleshed out, I mean, uh, I mean, there would be people running out of here screaming and gnashing of teeth. You know what I mean? I mean, just, I mean, we 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 wouldn't even want to see one of one of our lives up there probably. And so, thank God uh, that He said He blots them out for 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 you know His yeah, sake. Yeah. That's because He loves us so much. He doesn't want to have anything standing in the way of Him, our Father, being able to be a blessing to us. Yeah. And if you're a parent, then you know all about that. No matter how much your son, your daughter, whatever, you know, uh, messes up, it's just like you can't help it. You just keep coming right back around. Gotta, I got to come into blessing. I got to come. I, I, I can't just leave it like that, you know. And uh, so, you know, our Heavenly Father is like that. And I, I heard one minister say, <clears throat> someone from his church came to the church service and said, Pastor, I can't come to the church services anymore. He said, why is that? He goes, well, I, became, I, be, I have become the thing that I hate. He goes, what's that? He goes, I've become a hypocrite. He goes, what are you talking about? He says, well, you know, I've always you know, said there's some people that, you know, they act like they're all spiritual and they, they talk the things of God. He goes, and, and then, uh, you know, I'd see them doing things, you know, that I know a Christian shouldn't be doing, you know, and... Uh, <clears throat> He said, and I started gambling, and I started drinking beer with my buddies and, you know, different things on Friday night. He says, and, and then I've come into the church, and I'm lifting my hands, and I'm praising the Lord like, you know, I'm all that. He goes, well, you got one thing right, this pastor said to this guy. He goes, you got one thing right. He goes, you're a hypocrite, all right. <laughs> he goes, you're definitely a hypocrite. He goes, but the thing is, you're a hypocrite on Friday, not on Sunday. He says, just change who, what you're doing on Friday and be the real person who you really are. You know, sometimes the, the devil will just try to talk you out of the blessings of God, try to dog you, try to separate. You know, religion will try to separate you from God, and, and the real love of God will always lead you into his presence. God doesn't care about where you've been. He's only concerned and interested in which direction you're going and which direction you're looking right now. 
That's all God really cares about is if you're in a direction towards him, if you're looking to him, really what happened yesterday, last week, last month, last year, it really doesn't matter. He said he blots out your transgressions for his sake because he wants to bless us. He doesn't want to have anything. So go ahead and come on in. Stop, stop whatever you were doing. And I'll tell you what, if you just draw in closer to him, you'll find out your love for him and his love that begins to pour into you will be so awesome, you will literally think, what was I even thinking? And, uh, but here in Isaiah, the 43rd chapter here, uh, the first verses we were looking at there, it says, Behold, I do a new thing. Everyone say, God's doing a new thing. You know, Annie and I, in our travels, <clears throat> we were in India last year. We were at Rama Bible Training Center, India, and that's in Nagpur. And uh, they had a, a Rama gathering where all the gra- graduates from Rama, India, came back home for a week. And my wife and I, Annie and I, had the privilege to minister about three sessions a day for almost a week. And then we ended up with an ordination service. After that ordination service, uh, we went back to our hotel room. We had an international flight the next day. And about 3.30 in the morning, the Lord woke me up. Now, uh, you may not know a whole lot about me and how God uses me, but um, I've been given to spiritual dreams. How many of you have ever had a spiritual dream? Some of you. Well, you know, it's scriptural. You know, Acts chapter 2. You know, if you read the book of Acts, and you especially, especially you get to Acts chapter 2, you say that, he said, in the last days, saith God, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. My, my, ma- my handmaidens uh, will, pro- my, my, the young men and the handmaidens will prophesy. He goes, I'll pour out my spirit. He goes, your old men shall, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. I guess I've been reclassified. Uh, but anyways, I'm sure Pastor Ed's have a few dreams now. But uh, vision, you're staying with visions. You're staying with visions. All right. I'll, I'll support that, Pastor. I'm, don't back off. Don't let the devil talk you out of that, all right? <clears throat> But, you know, in the last days, it's scriptural that we would see visions, that we would have dreams. And I, can I just share one uh, dream, just to kind of let you know I you know, haven't fallen out of a tree or something. Um, I was, uh, we were on our way to China, Asia. We were going to be ministering to 500 leaders in an underground church, representing I don't know how many thousands uh, of, of, minister, uh, of people, congregations, uh, people in, their, in these different congregations. And uh, in that meeting, we got shut down by the secret Chinese secret police. It was an amazing trip, and I don't have time to tell you all about it, but um, matter of fact, I think one time we did talk about it, and we might even have showed you a video about that trip. Yeah. <clears throat> but um, at that uh, very time, we were getting ready to go out uh, there uh, to, to Asia, and we, we were going to several places. I think we were going to Rama, Singapore, too. But, um, you know, our, our credit cards were sort of maxed out. Don't, don't throw anything at me, you know, unless you're perfect. But... Um, you know, when you have big vision, you, sometimes you just keep doing some things, just believing that God's going to meet you on the other end. And, uh, you know, a ministry like ours could easily go through twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 in one month just because there's some months that all the money's going out, and then the next month you got a lot of good cash flow coming in. And, and so you, you just never know. And, and, uh, but we had gotten into some debt, and, uh, but I was uh, waking up in the middle of the night, by the Lord, and, uh, and this whole story, there's an underlined um, teaching in it for an impartation, if you'll listen right now really intently and, and get what God's about to say, because it's not only setting up what I'm about to tell you, but it's all, there's an impartation in this one story alone, and, and that is that um, the Lord said, uh, well, I was waking up, and, and I saw myself at like some kind of a retreat or hotel place, and and my pastor, Pastor Scott Webb, his wife, Phyllis, um, took me by the arm and said, I need to take you out to the courtyard. There was a gazebo out there. And this seemed a little strange, but it was Dr. Dufresne sitting out there, a prophet of God. And Paul Crouch, uh, the president of, of, of T, TBN. And uh, so I said, okay, well, let's go. And I go there, and, and she leads me and, I, and stands me right in front of Dr. Dufresne, this prophet of God, awesome minister just uh, about two weeks ago his plane crashed in uh, uh, Wichita Kansas a very sad thing that happened because I my wife and I have flown in his private jet uh, a number of times doing meetings together and I used to book 
services for him at churches that we had been to. I was sending him to some of the places where we had. So we had a very close relationship. It was a very sad thing to see him uh, go that way. Um, but I was the Lord uh, in this dream. Our pastor's wife, Miss Phyllis, took me and stood me right in front of Dr. Dufresne. And we, we know he's a, 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 an amazing prophet of God. And uh, he said, now concerning those finances, and I said, all right, here we go. It's about my finances. This is going to be good. I need some talk about my finances, you know, because we left on this trip, and, I mean, it was, it was uh, really tight. And, you know, going on this trip, you know, we, we need plenty of money to do everything on this trip. And uh, we were pretty maxed out. And uh, so he's got my ear right away. He goes, now concerning those finances, and he said something like, uh, I've heard your prayers, and your faith has touched, touched me. And, and he began to just begin to declare some things, and it was awesome, and it was amazing, and the more he talked, the more excited I got, and then I, I left there, and Annie and I, you know, took each other by the hand, and we went into a hallway, and we, we were so excited about the word of the Lord, we were jumping up and down and going, yes, glory to God, and we were acting like, like two little schoolgirls, you know, just all happy and buzzing about this wonderful promise that this, the prophet gave us, and then uh, I woke up. Y'all realize this was a dream, right? <laughs> and then I woke up. And uh, we were at the Weston Hotel, right across, practically across the street almost, about half a mile down from the airport. And, man, I mean, when I woke up, the anointing was all over me. I mean, I felt like I was glowing. And I thought, I need to write this down. Mm -hmm. So I went into my office, you know, in a hotel room. There's an office, the restroom. And uh, I got out a notepad, and I sat there, put the lid down, sat on, on the commode, and I said, okay, I, I said, let's, let's have it, Lord. I said, Lord, would you uh, bring that back to me just the way your prophet said it, because I want to write it down, because I know you're about to do something concerning this, and I know I'm going to have a testimony in this, and I want to be able to tell people about it, and I want to get it right. I want to say it just the way you said it. And so I'm ready to write. I got my notepad. I got my pen out. I'm ready to write this, this uh, everything that prophet said. He said, now concerning the, those finances, concerning those finances, and uh, I'm waiting for the next part, and I don't get anything. And I said, uh, okay, let me help you out, Lord. Uh, Ms. Phyllis took me over to Dr. Frayne. Dr. Frayne began to say, now concerning those finances, now I'm ready for the rest. Okay, here we go. And I got nothing. I said, Lord, this isn't funny. I mean, you woke me up 3.30 in the morning. I know this was you. There's no doubt because I, the, the, I, I'm even, I've had several experiences in Africa, different places, where the Lord showed me the service before the service happened, and then it happened just like that, some very unusual things. And that's why he showed me in a dream, so that I would be able to handle what happened. Uh, like one night when a lady took a glass who's never done this and threw a whole glass of water on me while I was preaching. Power of God hit me and I just went out. But I saw that in a dream. And, and so, so I was ready for that, okay? So here I'm, I'm saying, Lord, you know, this isn't funny. I, kn I know this was you. I know, I know you, you were telling me something about our finances and I need to get it. If I'm going to ever repeat this, I need to hear it just the way you said it. I don't want to add to it. I don't want to make it up. I don't want to put my own spin on it. I want, to, I want to get it just the way you said it. Now, could you tell me that one more time? And how many of you know, I mean, I'm even quoting scripture to the Lord. Now, in, you know, John chapter 14, you know your word says the Holy Spirit's been given to us. He will show us things to come. He'll bring all things to our remembrance. Da, 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 da. And, and I said, okay, so I'm ready. So Miss Phyllis, I'm rehearsing this with the Lord again. Now, Miss Phyllis took me by the arm, led me out to the courtyard. I'm standing in front of Dr. Dufresne. Dr. Dufresne began to say, now concerning your finances, and I'm ready to write. I'm, I'm helping the Lord out. How many of you know the Lord doesn't need your help? Yeah. I'm, I guarantee you, he does not need your help. No, he does not. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm, I'm listening, and I'm waiting, and, I, and, I, and I'm trusting the Holy Spirit, to, and I'm getting nothing. And I, now I'm really, I'm starting to get frustrated because I thought, this is going to be a wasted experience if the, the Holy Spirit doesn't remind me exactly what he said. And uh, so all of a sudden, the Lord said this to me. He said, I left it blank on purpose because I want you to fill in the blank. Some of you just got that. But how many of you know the Bible says we're satisfied by the fruit of our lips? 
How many of you know it's Jesus the one that said, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into sea, and not doubt, doubt in his heart, but believe the things which he saith shall come to pass. He'll have whatever he saith. And, and Jesus just had to remind me, he said, you know, of course, Job said, You shall decide and decree a thing, and it shall be established unto you. And so if things are going to take place, how many, you know, you are the greatest prophet in your life is the words that come out of, the words that you prophesy are the words that are going to carry the most weight. Amen. So good. Right. I mean, it's wonderful when, when a man of God confirms something that you've had in your heart and, you know, yeah. just knowing that God confirmed something that you sat on and has been brewing on the inside of you. I mean, that, that is encouraging. Yep. The Bible says, despise not prophesy, prophesying. And so... It's a, it's a blessing, mm -hmm. those, con, those times of confirmation. But the, but the Lord was just letting me know, I, I need to kick it in. I need to fill in the blank. He's basically giving me a blank, chest says, a blank yeah, check and said, right. you fill it in. Right. And so I, I don't know what you need tonight, but we could stop right now and say, you just got something. Because yeah, Jesus is the one that said, ask and you shall receive. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. Right. James said, you have not because you've asked. asked not. So, you know, there's times that we, we, we start thanking God for things, and we never even ask them for things. Yeah. You know, to really release faith is to be bold enough to ask him for it. Don't go generically around just thanking God for everything that you never even asked him for. It actually takes faith and a, and a, and, and a, a heart trusting and a reality that you know he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek yep, him, yep. to actually go boldly enough to say, I'm asking you for this, and I actually believe I'm going to receive that. And thanks God, 5, 1 John 5.14 says, this is the confidence we have in him. If we ask anything in his name, that uh, according to his will, we know he hears us when we pray. Aren't you glad God hears you when you pray? Not just Pastor Ed, not just your brother Kevin Durant. You know, God hears you when you pray. And if we know he hears us when we pray, we know we have the petitions we desire of him. But Jesus is the one to say, you'll have what you say. Yeah, it's great if someone else says it for you, but what's going to have more weight in your life, the greatest profit in your life is the words that come out of your mouth. Am I boring you? Is this, I mean, you've heard this so much, that it's just not that exciting stuff anymore, this, this faith stuff. Just not, how many of you know that if you just have a speck, just a grain of mustard seed, that's enough right there to move the mountain? Just, a, just one speck, one speck of faith. But we've bought into a whole society that now we've got more faith in what sickness is supposed to do, and you know, we've named things, you know, attention deficit. We used to just tell kids, go out and play, and you'll get over it. And they would. Now we're going to name all kinds of, if you're forgetting something, you know, we're going to put a name on it. Now we've got a condition. And, and we're all concerned about our medical issues, our, our, our health insurance plans, when really we have a health issue, and that is people got to get back to not what's in their medicine cabinets, but really the, 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 the root of all your healing Receiving is what you have on the inside of you in your confidence towards God, because Jesus still is the healer. Oh, I wish I had a friend in here tonight. I wish I had a friend. Man. But, you know, the society and our culture that we're living in is watering it down, watering it, and is actually trying to get everyone more, you know, their faith is more built up in the fact that they are. You know, you, you can tell that people have faith in sickness is because when they hear flu season, they either get a shot or they go put in their medicine cap, cabinet, the NyQuil, the, you know, the, the sinus can stuff, you know. I'm not trying to, you know, put condemnation on anybody, but, you know, l let's be stirred up. Yeah, right, let's be right, stirred up to, right. to not go to the arm of the flesh and actually look to a God who's able to do more than what you can ask or think. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I said that to say that, um, that that was the long route to that the Lord, you know, often will speak to me with dreams. And so here I'm woken up at 3.30 because I had another dream. And the Lord said this. And I, I'm almost sure you've never heard this phrase before. He said, there's a new anointing for a new harvest. He says, I'm going, to go, I'm going to begin to have you 
lay hands on people for a new anointing for a new harvest. Everyone say a new anointing, a new anointing for, a new for a new harvest. I wish I could have thought of something like that myself. <laughs> I would have put it on posters. I would have put it on a website. I, I, would, have, I would have marketed that, that whole phrase, a new anointing. But every pastor I've talked, to, I've talked to in the last year and a half, I've not run into one person that said they've ever heard that actual phrase, a new anointing for a new harvest. That's because it came from God. I'm not smart enough to think of a statement, a phrase, that people for years have never said out of their mouth. Pastor Ed, have you ever heard that phrase, a new anointing for a new harvest? He says, then you're going to have to lay hands on people for this new anointing for a new harvest. Can you imagine that God just maybe might have the capability, might have something in his awesome infinite wisdom and plan that in the day that we're living in right now that he might have kept something back that he said I will I will do this when I'm ready and it's going to bring increase to them yeah, I can imagine. for instance first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 says I has not seen nor ears heard the things that God has prepared and I like what the amplified says prepared and has kept ready for them Amen. God has the ability you know, we used to be able to preach and just quote scriptures however we wanted to, and no, no one knew the difference, whether we messed up or not, but now we got spell check. You know, you, you can follow the preacher along, you can know if he's preaching the Bible or not. You know, we got the scriptures right there. But it says, but as it is written, I has not seen or ears heard the things that have entered into the heart of man, the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. The Amplified says, has prepared and kept ready. Can you believe... That somehow God might have the ability to have prepared and kept ready for some things for this very day, this very hour, yeah. things you're going to need to come into a greater place, a wealthy place, a place of you having more equipment, different tools to harvest than what you've ever had before. Is it possible yes. for God to have kept ready, prepared something? For right here in Greensboro, yeah. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. on a Wednesday night, Tonight. that this would be your night, night. that somebody who got something from in India, God put his mark on, on a minister, put an anointing on him to take it to people, that God knew where he was going to go, that you would be in the right place at the right time to receive that anointing. Yeah that removes burdens and destroys yokes, cause increase, manifest the blessing of the Lord in your life on a greater level than you ever have before. Hallelujah. You know, when the anointing comes, it makes people do extraordinary things that they wouldn't normally be able to do. If you look through the Bible, anytime the anointing was manifested, you see things happen, unusual things, from taking a coin out of a fish's mouth, from all of a sudden bread and fish multiplying, from all of a sudden some disciples in a boat fishing, not catching anything all night, then the anointing shows up. He says, no, just cast your net on the other side. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> really? And all they did was cast the net on the other side, and then their nets began to break because they couldn't hold all the fish. They had to call their buddies over to catch the rest of the fish to get what was left over from the nets that were overflowing. When the anointing came, things changed. Yeah. Elijah outran the king's chariot. When the anointing came on him, he, he, he became Superman. When Samson had the anointing one last time, we know because of his, his hair, it was the secret to his, his empowerment from heaven, and he, he forfeited that. And he did something he shouldn't have done. But then when he was standing before all those people in the big, you know, Colosseum, and, and Samson cried out, Lord, just one more time, let your anointing come on me. He stood between the, the most biggest supportive pillars in that Colosseum, and the anointing came on him one more time. He pushed on those pillars, and the whole place came tumbling down. It's amazing what the anointing will do on a man. It's, it's, an, it's an amazing if you, if you never preached, if you never taught the Word of God, Pastor Ed can confirm this, 
it's the most... One of the reasons why I know every word of the Bible is true and that we really are going to heaven is because ministers do things and say things that in our own ability we could have never done in, 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 a, in a thousand years. You, you find yourself doing things, saying things, and, or you know, people in the church will have some you know, $64,000 question for you at the end of a service and you actually have the words to answer them. And you, and, and you go home and go, how did that happen? Isn't that the truth? People, when they call you pastor, see, whatever you call someone is what you summons on their life. You know, it's, it's important that you call Pastor Ed your pastor, that you actually call him pastor, because that summons the depth of all the word, all the study time, laying before the Lord, all the hands that were laid on, on him, the impartation, the deposits from heaven, everything he's got in God. When you say pastor, you're, you're placing a demand on that gift. And that's what's sad about people going to churches. They don't even know why they're at that church is to receive, number one, from that, that one anointing. Yeah. And if they really knew that, they would have burdens destroyed, mm -hmm. removed. They would have yokes destroyed, burdens removed. Mm -hmm. But yet you, we, we have a, large pe a, lot, a lot of people in the body of Christ walking around with all kinds of entanglements and bondages to sin and, and confusion and, and pressure and oppression, depression and fear and all these things. Th those are things that if you receive the anointing from your, just even your pastor and recognize that anointing's for you to set you free from that, you'll walk free from that. Mm. Amen. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Yeah, amen. Praise That's the Lord. <laughs> yeah, at least get an amen from the, from the pastor for sure. <clears throat> but the anointing will cause you to do things you've never been able to do before. And there's some things that we're called to, to be manifest manifestations of the sons of God. The whole earth is groaning for a manifestation for the sons of God. We need more boldness. We need our mouths filled with the word. We need to let the, the, the love of God compel us to reach out to people that are around us all the time that we get lockjaw because we're not tapping into the anointing and the ability that God's given us and empowered us to, to reach out. You know what? Uh, I know, I know the, this church has you know, gone through different things and... <laughs> And, uh, you know, some people, another church is doing something on another cross town. And, you know, sometimes people will leave one church and go to another church. And, uh, you know, all, for all different reasons. And I have found most people leave churches for the wrong reasons. And, and part of that's just what I just said. They, they, they don't realize, uh, you know, who their pastor is. Yeah. You can't leave a church because you like the basketball nets at the other place. Right. You, can't, you can't go to another church because you like their worship. That, right. that, that's not the reason why you even choose a church. Right. And people do it all the time. Yeah, they got a rock wall. Oh, let's go to church there. You know, our kids really like it. So you go to a church that your kids really like, but you're suffering because you're not where you're supposed to be to get the supply God said you're supposed to get. People say, well, you know, you know we're all different members in every body, you know, and, and you, know, you might be the bicycle seat. Well, you might go over to another church, and they already got a bicycle seat. If you're going to get your supply and be a supply, you've got to be on the bicycle God has called you to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. You can get that tape, uh, uh, that CD out there, No Pastor, No Pastor. You know, I, I talk about some of those things. And, and uh, I'm passionate about those things because, uh, but, but, but even with that said, you know, um, those things are kind of hard to take sometimes, especially as a pastor, because, you know, you, you can't help but feel like, you know, they, they've left you. You know, they, you know when you're a, a spiritual father to somebody, you know, those, those are, those are uh, tough things to take. And, and especially when you know you still are. And some, sometimes uh, God will never release that. I've seen many people go down the road, and, and, and then you just hear about them deteriorating. It's because they, cut them, they got offended or something, right. you know, and, and, and then the, you know, they, they find themselves not receiving anymore. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Yes, it is. Praise God. And, uh, but... What the Lord wants you to know is God's bringing a new harvest into this church. Look, would, you, would you look at Ezekiel chapter 12? Yes. Pastor knows where I'm going. Ezekiel chapter 12, I'm going to start reading with the 21st verse. says, And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, what is this proverb that you, that you people have about the land of Israel, which says the days are prolonged and every vision fails? 
Tell them, therefore, thus says the Lord, of God, the Lord God, I will lay this proverb to rest, and they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel, but say to them, the days are at hand, and the fulfillment of every vision. For no more shall there be any false vision or flattering divination within the house of Israel. For I am the Lord, I speak, and the word which I speak will come to pass. It will no more be postponed, for in your days, O rebellious house, I will say the word and perform it, says the word God. And again, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, look at the house of Israel, is saying the vision that he sees is for many days from now, and he prophesies of times far off. Therefore say to them, thus says the Lord God, none of my words will be postponed anymore, but the word which I speak will be done, says the Lord. Hallelujah. I want you to know that there's faith, there's a, a, a mandate on this house, and Pastor Ed and the family here, there there's a mandate, they have a, a purpose and a calling on them, and every word that God has spoken shall come to pass. And uh, I tell you what, God is a rewarder of the faithful. Mm -hmm. The faithful man shall abound with blessing. Uh, it's not the rolling stone that gathers anything. It's, it's the stone that st stays in place and where they're supposed to be that gathers the moss and, and gathers things from the, the brook. Um, the Bible says that those that be planted in the house of the Lord, they'll flourish. Not moving from church to church, not moving from here to there, but those that be planted. There's something about the word planting that suggests you have roots that go down deep. And, and roots that grow down deep, they're not going to be moved, but they will rise up to be blessed, have the favor, have the goodness, have the grace of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we were in, uh, we were in Biloxi, Mississippi. Uh, what was that? What, what hurricane came? Katrina. Katrina that's right. Uh, and and it, it wiped out that coastline. And, and Annie and I were staying at a Marriott courtyard, and they actually showed a video of that hurricane coming to shore, coming to land, and it came, it, it actually washed cars from the parking lot into the lobby of the hotel, and they showed marks, see, see that border right there, that border trim? They had like marks in the, in the lobby of the hotel where the floodwaters were that high at the hotel, which was like six or seven hundred yards from the beach line. That water came in that far, and the water mark was that high, busted glass windows into the hotel, and, and people were videotaping from the, from the second floor watching the water come up the stairs. Well, as you drive down the coast, you'll see all these barren slabs where buildings, hotels, homes used to be all along that coast. You just, all you see is the slab there, the footer that the house was built upon. Well, here there's a, a, a famous restaurant. Matter of fact, the chef makes a, a great gumbo that one of the president's uh, inauguration dinners, uh, they're, the, they're the ones that got the, the ability to serve their gumbo at this dinner. And so it's a famous place to eat, and they have great seafood. My wife and I, Annie, we were eating at that restaurant. And it just so happens that in the courtyard of this restaurant, there's a standing tree. It's a 2,000-year-old oak tree still standing. It's because that tree has some serious roots. Good. Are you all here tonight? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. And so those that are faithful shall abound with blessing. Amen. Amen. That's a good word. Yeah. And, and, and there's something to be said about um, sticking with your man of God and uh, seeing it through and knowing where your connection is. I heard a minister say, uh, and this isn't, I won't charge you anything extra for this. This is all free. Um, but he said, there's three people that you should never be offended by. And that is God, your spouse, and your pastor. God, your spouse, and your pastor. Those three areas, those three different people, relationships in your life can cut you off from your supply of the Spirit quicker than any other thing to be offended in, in either one of those areas. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. What else do we want to do here, Lord? Praise God. Are you getting anything tonight? Hallelujah. <clears throat> 
Praise God. Why don't we just lift our hands for just a moment? <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Why don't you just tell them you love them tonight and just, uh, just forget about who's sitting next to you and just worship the Lord for just a moment. Father, we, we magnify you and we worship you. Thank you for visitation. Thank you for your presence tonight. Thank you for manifesting your power, manifesting your anointing, this new anointing for a new harvest. Father, I thank you for a new harvest for this church. Father, we thank you that you sent us here at the right time. You knew the timing. This is the place. This is the time. This is the hour. And Father God, you, you mean business about what you said for us to do here. And so, Father God, we know we, we're not playing games. We're not just manifesting something in our own uh, thinking, in our own ability. But, Father God, we know we're here by assignment, and we thank you for what you're about to do. Amen. Right before we lay hands on you tonight, those of you that would want hands, you don't have to have hands laid on you, but I would be glad to minister by the laying on of hands to impart this new anointing for a new harvest. Now, I want to just tell you, I'm going to read you a letter. This is just one letter. Um, I just heard that there's another pastor of Reno, Nevada, that... Uh, you know, said very similar things to this, and I need to get with him and tell him to go ahead and send me the letter so I can share it with others. But um, my wife and I were in Michigan uh, not too long ago, and I want to just read to you after we were there, and I, by the leading of the Holy Ghost, ministered this new anointing for a new harvest. This pastor wrote me a, a letter and said this, It's been 83 days since you were with us on the 16th under the direction of the Holy Spirit. Now, this is a pastor. This is somebody who knows the Bible He's a full-time minister, a graduate of Raymond Bible Training Center, been in ministry for a while, and this is what he's saying. Uh, you said there's a new anointing for a new harvest, and it won't take long. They'll come quickly. We rejoice as our minds went to what it usually goes to when we hear about harvest money. However, there is a flow of new anointings that are different than we expected. I didn't even realize that that it's what was happening until the Holy Spirit pointed it out. I'm not even really sure how to explain it without writing an email. You would need a day off after reading. I guess the best way is to say the flow of revelation, wisdom, correction, humility, healing, forgiveness, courage, and divine order has been awesome. Now the money is starting to come too. I could share details for a long time. This is a person with integrity that's, that's, that's sharing this letter. This is what happened to him and his family. I could share details for a long time, but I ought to say God was faithful to bring you here that night and to use you to impart words of power for us to receive and to run with. On a personal level, I've never enjoyed a closer relationship with God or experienced more freedom, joy, peace, and fun in my life. My marriage has never been this great. My kids are at a level they've never been before. Our family as a whole is better than it's ever been. None of these things were terrible, but avoiding terrible isn't much of an achievement with God. Jesus provided an extraordinary life for us to live. The last two series I've ministered have been at a new level. The church is growing and people are getting intentional about living a life pleasing to God. The list goes on and on. God is faithful. Thank you again for obeying God and being here that night you, that, and obeying the Holy Spirit in what you ministered. The transformation continues. That's just one letter. And uh, so uh, we have been seeing fruit. And I want to encourage you. I was telling uh, Pastor Ed just a little bit about this on the phone and we may talk about it a little bit tonight at dinner, but um, there is just even in the natural and the financial arena, there are things that are getting ready to be um, released to the body of Christ. Um, the, the body of Christ, I'll just say this, is going to be so fully funded here very soon. You just watch and see. And I'm a false prophet if it doesn't come to pass fairly soon. There, there are several things that are getting ready to bust loose mm -hmm. that is going to be outstanding, extraordinary, and amaze people. Right. All the stuff you've been seeing in the news, which the news is always propagating the, the most you know, horrible scenarios, and then not only do they tell you about whatever the bad news is, now they're going to tell you how, whether you should feel afraid or not. Yes. You know, they'll say, They'll tell all the stuff, and they'll say, should we be worried? And, and then the other person, the professional, will go, yes, you should be worried. Yes, you should. Well, hello, we're not even on that, that system. Aren't you glad that we have a covenant 
with a God who says that all of your needs shall be supplied according to his riches and glory. Can someone say amen to that? I mean, if God took care of the Israel, Israelites in the desert, you know, he'll surely take care of us in, in 2014. Amen. Amen. 2014, whatever it is. So, um, I mean, just one thing, you know, uh, there's some, it's not grants, it's some certificates worth close to $500 billion that are in the custody of some pastors in New Jersey. Money that goes all the way back to the Rockefellers that... The, the codes have been found and discovered, and they've been released under these, these pastors, and there, it's going to be money used for humanitarian efforts. Well, there's no other people that stand more in a position for humanitarian efforts than the body of Christ and for the church. And all it takes is that we step, step it up and have a bigger vision, and we need to have more money than just enough money to take care of the diapers in the nursery yeah. and just one more large screen TV somewhere. Yeah. We need to have enough money to take care of the, 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 the motherless. Mm -hmm. We need enough money to take care of the widows. We need enough money to build buildings mm -hmm. to take care of the people on the street. And the thing is, do you know what $500 trillion would do in the world? It would end starvation absolutely end starvation. There would not be a reason for anyone to, to ever starve, go to bed hungry again for as long as they live. But churches, ministries are going to be getting checks for $50 million. All over. I, I, I've actually been uh, called upon to actually travel and represent and to get the vision out to churches to get them to just figure out what their vision is so that they're ready to go when this money's released. The government's trying to tax this money by 60%, and this family who has the money is, 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 is fighting for the kingdom of God, saying this is God's money. We get in line with everyone. We'll, we'll, if you've got a project that, that assists in needs of people, get in line. But don't come in here when this is God's doing and think you can just tax God's, God's money. But that's what the government's trying to do. And if it has to go to the Supreme Court, it will. But I just want to let you know there are some things that is going to be a, things are getting ready to bust wide open, no matter what you hear out there. And that's just one thing I'm talking about. There's more than just one thing. I don't have the time to tell you. But it, it doesn't matter. I just want to tell you, just get your expectation up. Get, let, let your faith be inspired and, and, and realize there is a harvest. There's a harvest, and God wants to deliver a new anointing for a, a new harvest. You know, here's, here's a phenomenal thing, and, and I'll close with this as we prepare to lay hands on people. And Nathan, if you want to come, I don't know how you all do it here and prepare to, to just worship the Lord on your guitar while we lay hands on folks. But the most important thing you could get in your heart, everyone listen really closely. We're almost done. I'm sorry if we've gone a little bit long, longer than what you're normally used to on Wednesday night. But... The most important thing that we can be mindful of, our faith is so important, but the thing that God's interested in more than anything is souls. More than anything else. And really, that's what our faith, yes, is our faith to help you, you know, get a new home? Is, is, is your faith so that you can get a new, you know, car? You know, God's interested in all those things. But you know what? Here's the thing. He said, if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, he said, then all those things will be added unto you. Everyone say, if I seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, he's, and all these things will be added unto me. Now, I'll tell you, a, a great example of that. Now, now listen really care, carefully. You remember Solomon? The Lord appeared to him in the middle of the night in a dream. In a dream. And he stood at the foot of Solomon's bed, and God said to Solomon, Solomon, ask whatever you would want me to do for you. How many of you can tell me what, how, how about these kids? Any of these kids know what Solomon asked for? Any, any of you guys? Any of the kids? Any kids under 15 years old can tell me what Solomon asked for? Anybody? Yeah. He asked for wisdom. All right, we got a winner. Jackpot. But you know what? 
Now listen to the truth of this. What Solomon was asking for was he wanted help to help people. He wanted to be able to help the people. He said, Lord, I'm, I, I don't even know how to come in out of the rain. I'm just a little kid. I, this responsibility fell on my lap. I don't know what I'm doing. Help me, Lord. I want to help these people. Please give me wisdom to know how to help these people. And do you know what God said to him because he asked it? Now think about that. God standing at the foot of your bed saying, I will do whatever you ask for me right now. Most of us would ask, I want to be completely out of debt and have a whole lot more money to, to do some cool things. <laughs> Plus pay the medical bills. <laughs> Solomon said, I want to help people. Lord, I need wisdom. And here's what the Lord said. He said, Solomon, because you didn't ask for something to slay your enemies and you didn't ask for something for yourself but to help people, tell you what, here's what I'm really going to do for you. I'm going to give you some things you didn't ask for. I'm going to give you what you asked for, for this wisdom. And the, if you read it there, it says, no one before you or after you will be wiser than you. According to the word of God, we could say Solomon then was the wisest man ever lived. That is powerful. How, how many of you would like to be the wisest person ever lived? You think that changed anything in your life? You think Bill Gates has some money? Think about what you would have if you were the wisest man ever lived. Then he says, I'm going to add long life. And I'm going to add riches to you. Sounds like to me, Matthew chapter 6, seek first the kingdom of God. God. Seeking first the kingdom of God is seeking God. Lord, how can I manifest as a son of God on this earth? Let me say that again. You want to know how to seek first the kingdom? Is every morning wake up and go, Lord, how can I be a blessing today? Lord, I want you to use me today. I, I want there to be someone I can speak into their life today. If you'll wake up that, that motive in your heart to seek, you know, we've almost grown to look at people as an interruption. Well, I've got things to do. You're in an interruption to what I really need to get to. No, people are our purpose. Hello? Hello? I said people are our, our purpose. I said people are our purpose. Is everyone focused? Everyone focused? Everyone focused? I know we've got a little bit of moving, a little bit of you know, you know, stuff going on. You need to be focused tonight on receiving a new anointing. Now listen. I've done my best to share with you my absolute experience in God and my conviction of what God has sent us here to do. If you don't believe what I have said to you, you know, the, what does it say in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20? Uh, if you believe the Lord, you'll be established. If you believe his prophets, you'll prosper. Listen, if you don't believe what I have ministered tonight as truth, no condemnation, but please don't come up here to have hands laid on you. You'll be wasting my time, your time, and everyone else's time. But if you've heard the word tonight, if you, if you believe, you know what? This is God's, God's word. This is, I, I believe in what God said to him. I, I believe in what he's here to deliver. If you're convicted in your heart, if you believe that, then we want to lay hands on you. So if that's you, you want hands laid on you, would you please stand? Hallelujah. And if someone would take this pulpit, that'd be great. Just this last little thing I want to just tell you. It's important that you begin to look for and be aware of and expect things to change. Don't just expect God to do it all. It's going to require a little bit of effort on your part to pay attention. Everyone say, I'm going to pay attention. Say, I'm going to be more in tune with the Holy Spirit and what he shows me, what he's revealing unto my spirit. He is speaking. He is showing things. Jesus' whole earthly ministry, his entire ministry, he said again and again, I only do what I see my father do, 
and I only say what I hear my father say, let that be your motto. Let that be your assignment. I do what I see my father do, and I just say whatever he's telling me to say. If you'll make that your priority, you're going to recognize. You're going to recognize you're going to come right into some things of what tonight was about. Pay attention. Be on the lookout. Be full of expecting. I know it was just a few of us here tonight. Kenneth Hagen was in the room. John Hagee wasn't here. Kenneth Copeland wasn't in the building. But can you believe that God would have blessed you all so much with bringing this impartation to you right here at this church tonight? Don't lose sight of the visitation you got tonight because the Lord visited us here. Hold it close to your heart and don't let it go away. All right? God bless you. I love you. Annie says hello. And I'm so glad I was able to stop by. Pastor Ed's a Holy Ghost pastor. He prayed about it. He just knew it was right. And I'm so glad he knows the Holy Ghost and said, go ahead and come on. Because I, I really believe we experienced what we were supposed to get tonight. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Amen.